is Hamlet from Difference in Skill, and I am one week late for doing this. Um, well, that's because I've been very busy, and I told Chan about this, and well, he didn't want to do last week either because he was busy. So, episode twenty-two, cards on thoughts. Sorry for the lateness, but because of that, I have some new cards to talk about now. So, it's kind of good, kind of bad, but uh, next time I'll try to announce. That I'm actually not doing cards for dots during the week if I'm really busy and whatnot. But yeah, so today I'm talking about Cross Ride like Ancelot, um, and his new name is Bonds Liberator Ancelot Seneth. Okay, um, so I guess nobody really thought this was a Liberator at first or whatnot. Well, actually, eh, I don't know. I kind of expected Cross Ride because it's Ancelot again or whatnot. <laughs> Actually, I actually had a feeling this might might have been a royal paladin, but it, it's not, so yeah. Okay, so his ability. Limit break 4. Counterblast 1 cards with Liberator in his card name and choose one of your great 2 or less weird cards with Liberator in its card name and put it on the bottom of your deck. Um, so actually this card does require you to use a special counterblast and it does kind of have conditions. Um, conditional, non-conditions, not really a big thing. Um, but I guess they're kind of just bringing it back to put some more strictness into your deck. Not really. Okay. So his effect is, when this unit attacks a vanguard, you may pay a cost. If you do, look at the top card of your deck, search for, for up to one gold paladin of, from among them, call it to an open RC. So call it to an open weird guard space and put the rest on the bottom of your deck and that unit gains power plus 10,000 until end of turn. And of course, the second effect is if you have Solitary Liberator against Law in your soul, this unit gains 2000 power permanently and as Lord. Okay, so, so Crossfire and whatever, so nobody really cares about this part, I guess. Okay, um, so his Limit Break 4 ability is very, very powerful. Um, honestly, one of the. I'm pretty hype about this effect in a way, actually. It's. I think it's very good, like. Link Joker or not Link Joker, this is like, um, just pure, it's kind of like a pure plus one really, like I mean, uh, there's, there's no, there's really no downside to using this card's effect, like, um, maybe if you consider losing like a grade 2 or a grade 3 unit, um, for the exchange of basically anything that's on top of your deck, then I like, guess so, but if it's like a grade 2 and you, basically call something that's not a great 2, then you basically lose 500 shield, um, not really a big deal, I guess, like, I guess it's just there, like, it's a kind of reminder that you, there's a possibility to lose 5k shield, but, like, whatever, right? Um, so, of course, the first thing, um, that doesn't really need to be said is that this card pretty much gives you a 4th attack, um, and not only just because a fourth attack, your fourth attack also has power now because you also gain an additional 10k, um, meaning that you'll actually be able to hit so, some significant numbers or whatnot, or at least number that matters. So it's quite good. Like I mean, I don't really see much of a downside for this card. Like maybe the 5k shield, like not really. Like I mean, with uh, that's not really a big deal either with like quantum shield or not quantum shield, like. This gives you a fourth attack, which is basically what the good part is. Um, in this format with Link Joker, this card is very good as well because if you get one side locked, you basically still have a third attack, and your third attack is basically more or less guaranteed to hit a pretty decent number. Um, there's many ways to actually like talk, like do your attacks. Like you could just take one of your grade twos or grade threes, attack without boosted, and whatever unit you decide to basically whatever unit like luck decides to call out, right? Um, you gain the additional 10k power, and you also get a booster, so more or less it's going to be over 21, which would be pretty good. And um, you can still throw trigger power on it, like afterwards. Um, oh, actually not even, um, because this effect activates when you attack, so basically before the attack hits, you already activated an effect. So if you get critical trigger, you can still throw onto this uh, new unit that you called out. So yeah, there's really no downside to this, like, and like, before we, we talk into anything, um, like, even if you call a trigger out, it's not really a downside, because, like, you you can hit, it gains 10k power, meaning that it's gonna hit, like, 15, or, uh, I guess some triggers are 4k power, but, like, 14, 
at minimum, right? Um, assuming like I just talked about how you can just not boost with it beforehand, then it's still gonna be able to hit like at least 21 because most boosters are 7k now, like very little 6k booster anymore and you can still throw trigger power onto it if you actually get any, so pretty good. Um, of course, I guess if you get a trigger, you might, people might QQ about like not hitting the trigger instead, but I mean, not a big deal because you get the additional attack which is kind of like getting a trigger because you already have an additional 10k power on the unit that you just called out. Um, they have to call in the front roll. Oh, you don't even have to call it to a front roll actually. You just need to call it to an open space. Um, of course, you actually generate this open space by yourself. So if you need a booster, this card works as well. Uh, which is actually pretty neat when I think about it. And I think there's quite a lot of utility with this card now because like um, you you just have to send any card from your field like back into your deck. Back to the bottom of your deck, right? So Yeah, so you can choose any unit to like send back to the bottom, assuming that your entire deck is like liberator. Then there's really no downside to this because even if you call a trigger out like during this turn, it gains the additional 10k power and whatnot. Um, your opponent's probably not going to retire a trigger, like, they, they, there's really no point to doing that. So the next turn, right, you basically just counter boss one and send the trigger back to your deck and call a new unit and attack all over again and it's not really a big deal. Like, of course calling a trigger out will basically lower your attack power a little, but it's fine because, like, I mean, at the worst, if you call a trigger out the next turn, you just boost with it and attack and then just call another card and then you still gain 10k power so it can still probably hit the vanguard by itself unless they hit a trigger but during late game sometimes they probably can't afford to actually uh, take damage anymore and if you can't hit the vanguard you can still hit a weird guard which is still pretty good because um, we're assuming that it's going to be higher than 10k or higher than 11k power for sure anyway because of the 10k boost so not much to say about this. Uh, Crossfire is neat, I guess. It's not really a big deal. Very powerful card. Very good for this format. Very good even if it's not during this format because of the 4th attack. Um, especially I find that with like... Limit Break 4 effects are actually getting more and more powerful. Like, the game's kind of getting... Uh, like, every deck is actually becoming quite good lately. Like, um... The, what what makes the top tier top tier is just really because they have significant power to kind of stop decks from doing their own thing. So, um, yeah. Like, I think, um, even though, like, all the decks becoming really good, like, especially with, uh, maybe some people might feel the power creep, but, like, if everything's really good and, like, I think decks are kind of just separated now, like, um, you either get to trigger a lot of things. Like, either your Vanguard effects has some limit break for ability, that turns your entire deck to triggers, or they restand, or they just have some really good plusing power. That's basically the general idea of this format, I think. And I think it's fine because every deck kind of has their unique thing. It still requires setup and whatnot, so it's pretty fair. Um, this is probably one of the easiest setup to actually use because all you need is just a card on the field, and you can just place any card on in your hand on onto the field and actually just turn it into something more useful because you can just throw down a trigger and by accident it might turn into an attacker. So pretty decent. And I think I'll leave it at that for this episode and I will be back in the next episode. So see ya.